western coast of the North American continent is a land of movement and change. A border zone between the Earth's crustal plates, shifting against one another as our planet continues to evolve. Looming above this landscape, from British Columbia to Northern California, is a range of mountains called the Cascades. They are vivid expressions of the Earth's restless movement and are the home of some of the world's largest volcanoes. Formations of their own lava and debris, these volcanoes have influenced the landscape here for hundreds of thousands of years. For modern civilization, they are symbols of uncertainty and awesome power. People living within their midst have learned to watch and listen and pay heed to their moods. In southern Oregon, within an area now known as the Klamath Basin, there live a people whose coexistence with the volcanic landscape has encompassed many thousands of years. They see the physical world and the spiritual world as one. Each rock, each plant, each animal with whom they share their environment is an individual reflection of creation. The forces of weather and geologic change are the embodiment of powerful spirits which influence their lives. Their ancestors call themselves Makalak, the people of the marsh. These ancient ones told of a great battle that took place nearly 7,000 years ago between two mighty spirits named Skell and Lao. Skell was the spirit of the above world, the region of light and beauty. He lived in the marsh country. His messengers included the most active and beautiful creatures of the marsh when they appeared in visible form. Deep within the mountains surrounding the marsh, dwelt Lao. His was the domain of darkness and terror, the below world. The great volcanic mountain that towered over the western side of the marsh was Lao's passageway to the kingdom of light. In time, the spirit of the below world became angry with the people of the marsh. He emerged from the mountain as a dark cloud of smoke and vowed that he would destroy them. Hearing Lao's thundering voice, Skell came to the defense of the people and a furious battle began. The spirit of the below world poured forth as an avalanche of burning ash. Like a river of flame, he swept over the land, devouring forests and covering valleys, continuing on to the homes of the marsh people. To appease the wrath of the angry spirit, shamans climbed the mountain and threw themselves into the pit of fire. But Lao would not be appeased.
final burst of fury, Skell drove Lao underground, collapsing the mountain upon him. When daylight returned to the land, the high mountain was gone. Then came the spirits of the storms. Snow and rain fell for many years upon the ravaged land. In time, the spirits of the trees and animals returned in their physical forms. waters brought by the snow and rain covered Lao's entrance to the above world. Peace and quiet reigned over the earth. The people of the marsh called this place the lake of blue waters. For them, it was a place of great spiritual power, a passageway to the inner world of divine vision. They came to this sacred lake to bathe in its waters seeking contact with the spirit beings who dwelt there. To receive a vision was to experience a state of union with all creation. Body, mind, and spirit became one. Hunter, warrior, and shaman could return to their people with great strength and wisdom. By the middle of the 19th century, a new people was making a mass migration through the area surrounding the Lake of Blue Waters. These people embodied a world of different beliefs, a world seemingly separated from the rhythms and flows of the living landscape. They came to carve new lives from the raw material of the earth and to expand the growing empire they called the United States. Over the next 30 years, the people of the marsh would have to change their lives dramatically as the growing edge of this empire encompassed their homeland. The Makalak spiritual link with the living landscape would be weakened, but not severed. The lake over the battlefield of Lao and Skell would remain for them a sacred and powerful place. During these years of the great westward migration, the Lake of Blue Waters was discovered by gold prospectors and visited by soldiers, hunters, and thrill seekers. These newcomers would call it Deep Blue Lake, Lake Majesty, Hole in the Ground, Crater Lake. In the summer of 1885, a man named William Steele made a journey to this lake from the growing city of Portland. Years earlier, as a schoolboy in Kansas, Steele had been deeply moved by a short description of the lake that was printed in the newspaper wrapped around his lunch. For William Steele, Seeing Crater Lake was the fulfillment of a dream. The 
newspaper descriptions and fantasies of the past could not approach the reality now before him. He looked over the lake in awed silence. Realizing that the lake and its surroundings were unclaimed and open for exploitation, Steele became deeply inspired to protect the area from private development. Soon, his vision prompted a movement to create a national park. In 1886, William Steele returned with a scientific expedition to explore the lake's depths. They found it to be nearly 2,000 feet deep, one of the deepest lakes in the world. During the years that followed, Steele wrote numerous books and hundreds of newspaper articles describing the dramatic features of the lake and the deeply spiritual feelings he experienced there. The Lake of Blue Waters became known to people throughout the country. In 1902, Congress spoke for the hopes of an entire nation by preserving Crater Lake as a national park. In the tradition of the Makalak, it was recognized as a sanctuary of the spirit for all people. The geologists of our modern civilization Consider this mountain as the site of one of the most violent volcanic eruptions that this continent has ever known. The upper 5,000 feet of the mountain was destroyed. Fallout from the eruption blanketed hundreds of thousands of square miles with a layer of fine gray ash. This layer remains today as the signature of an awesome event and a reference point in geologic time. The lake which formed in the cavity of this volcano is among the most transparent bodies of fresh water on Earth. Its clarity has long inspired the curiosity of scientists. The knowledge they gain here contributes to the research of other lakes around the world. For hundreds of years, humankind has been coming to this lake, seeking power and vision and knowledge, seeking a sense of completeness within the universe that we all share. The lake of blue waters will remain for us a sacred place until Lao and Skell rise to do battle again. <laughs> 